right, we have Sharon Skinner with us today. Sharon, thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. So to get started, tell me a little bit, what got you started with writing so long ago? Well, uh, actually I started writing when I was in grade school. I used to fill sheets of, large sheets of paper with little teeny tiny cramped writing. I was telling all sorts of stories back then. And so I think it, it started very early for me. I've always been a voracious reader and I think that that has fed my need to write. I, I went through the, I went through the teenage angsty poetry, like most people, and then I got into the spoken word scene for a while here in the valley. I was doing slam and did some poetry, and and then one day in 1995, I was taking a creative writing class as an elective, and I wrote a novel in eight weeks. And I wow. realized that that's what I really wanted to do, is I wanted to write longer stories, have a bigger stage to set my stories on, and I started writing books. Okay. And so then how did you get connected with the whole beast that is Brickhead? Well, because of the poetry, mm -hmm. I had the connection there, and I started doing uh, some audio CDs. Okay. And then I had my first poetry book published by Brick Cave in 2010. And in 2012, my first novel was published with Brick Cave. It's this book here, The Healer's Legacy, which was written as a young adult book, but has a wonderful crossover audience now. I have readers 12 to 84 men and women enjoying this book. And in 2013, we published uh, The Nellig Stones, which is a middle grade fantasy. Mm -hmm. And that's getting really good reception from uh, middle grade readers, and particularly 10 and 11 year old boys, which is kind of exciting. Yeah. And then uh, last year, Mirabella and the Faded Phantom, my paranormal middle grade, came out. And that's doing pretty well out there already. It's getting a nice audience. And in uh, this year, I'm working on revisions to the next book, which okay. is the sequel to The Healer's Legacy. Awesome. Okay. Now, with, with Brickhave, anything else that you do? Anything else that you've been doing aside from the books? I did some film projects with Brick Cave, so I worked on Sacrifice, which was a great deal of fun. And I also was, uh, did some work on Yellowstone Sunset. I did the computer voice and some of the props for that. Now, you, you are being a little modest, because I was on both those projects. You didn't do it. You did anything that needed to be, to be done, um, actually. So, like, you came in, I'm going to do costuming. Oh, and I'm also going to take care of this. Oh, we have nobody who needs to get food, so I'm going to do that. Oh, and I'm going to, oh, you need me to act? Okay, cool. Oh, you need me to, be, like, be in makeup and do this and do that? And, okay, I'll do that. Oh, you want me to do the, the one part that has the most, like, ridiculous dialogue in the entire film? And you want me to do it tomorrow? Okay. Uh, so you're being a little much. <laughs> That was such a fun project, though. I, I got to yeah. tell you, uh, yeah, I kind of was all over it. And, you know, for people who go out and rent the movie, it, you can rent it on Amazon right. or you can buy it. So if you go out and rent the movie, I, I would urge you to try and pick me out in various places in the film. But I had a great deal of fun with that. I loved the location shooting that we did yes. out at the domes of Casa Grande. That was a blast. Mm -hmm. The crew and the cast were fabulous, and everybody just pulled together so well. Yeah. That's a great project. And Dude. gee, you starred in uh, at least one of those. <laughs> at, least, at least one or, or both. Um, oh, I started in Yellowstone Sunset. Um, my chubby doppelganger saw, uh, started in uh, Sacrifice. But yeah, no, I was, I was there as well. So no, it, it was, uh, it, like you said, it was good. The, the domes was crazy. Yeah, um, that's where your dusty um, doppelganger was in the movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, uh, there was a part where they said I needed a little bit of dust because it looks like I was coming out of a cave. And so what they did is they took a shovel that was overflowing with dirt and they got about this far away from me and just and yeah, so I got a, I got a good dusting of uh, dirt, which I, I think I'm still washing out of my hair uh, occasionally. So it's a good time. Love that scene. <laughs> it was fun. I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do. Uh, well, awesome. Well, so aside from the things you just mentioned, what, what, what else are you into? What else you got going? Well, I do a lot of arts and crafts kinds of things. I like to be very creative, so I like to keep that part of my brain going. So I also do, well, I did the costuming, so I do, I've done a lot of costuming and some fashion shows, mostly science fiction fantasy. I, a couple of years ago, I was the steampunk fashion coordinator at Phoenix Comic Con. Cool. Phoenix Comic Con, great times. And uh, that was a lot of fun. And I also, um, do a little bit of sculpting, a little bit of art, things like that. So you're all over the map. I mean, in regards to the things that you do, um, what's, what's the passion though? Of, of all the things that you do, what's, what's the passion? 
it really is the writing. The writing is my first love, and I kind of do a lot of things related to that. Right now, I'm the assistant regional advisor for the Society of Children's Book Writers and Illustrators here in Arizona. And we do a one-day conference every year, and, and we do some other things throughout the year. And I also teach writing workshops. So uh, in April, I'll be in Texas teaching a one-day writing workshop out there. I do some things at the libraries. like to do a lot of those events, uh, the book festivals, as you know. Right, right. Yeah. And things like that, because it's the writing really is my key passion. So that being said, um, and I, I'm sure you talked to a lot of writers out there and stuff, what, what, for aspiring writers, what's maybe something you would tell them as a piece of advice, you know, who are trying to get out there and do their thing? Well, um, I'd like to quote Jane Yolen on okay. that. Write the book, number one. Number two, write the book. And number three, write the book. Nice, okay. Yeah. Just got to do it. Yeah, you really have to just sit down and do it and mm -hmm. trust that if you've got a book in you, you've got a book in you. And if you have the urge to write, then you need to sit down and do it. All of the other stuff, the craft, I think, you know, craft is essential. You yeah. really need to study your craft, go to workshops, go to conferences, things like that. Make sure that it's the best book you can make it. But the most important thing is to sit down and write the book. And I know that there are people who will plan for too long sure. without getting into it. So the most important thing is to get the book on the page because revision, writing is rewriting. So you can always do the revisions later. Yeah. So, so Aside from the books and stuff, tell me about other things that you're proud of, other accomplishments that, you, accomplishments that you have had in the past. Well, I'm a U.S. Navy veteran. I was one of the first women to go to sea with the United States Navy. I was on the USS Jason, which was the first ship that took women on a full six-month Westpac cruise. Okay. I'm very proud of that service. Yeah. Well, first off, thank you for your service. Uh, and also, as a, uh, a father of two daughters, thank you for kind of breaking through a little bit with that, because that's, that's very awesome. Thanks. I have a new grandbaby. Cool. And that's pretty awesome. Great. I'm really enjoying that. I didn't think I, I was going to be one of those grandparents, but sure. I'm totally smitten, so I am. <laughs> and uh, so that's, that's pretty awesome. I also um, just recently became the past president of the Grants Professional Association National Board of Directors because in my day life, I still am a grants professional. Okay. And, uh, so, but it's, again, writing, it's, it's, yeah. it's a lot of it's focused on writing. So with, with all the projects that you've done, what's maybe the one thing that you haven't done that you'd want to do? What's a project that's like in the back of your head, if I could do it, I would be doing this? I would be writing full time. Just writing yeah, I would be writing the books full time. Gotcha. That's what I would be doing and doing the workshops and the author appearances mm -hmm. and things like that full time. And, and that's the path I'm on. Yeah. I'm just not quite there yet. The, the interesting thing is that people don't, tend to know is that everybody is a, not everybody can quit their day job right, right away. Uh, even J.K. Rowling didn't quit her day job with the first book. Well, she didn't have a day job. She was actually unemployed. But, right. you know, but, you know I, I, I once heard Holly Black, Holly Black speak, and she's very well known. She's got a number of books out. She said she quit her day job a little too soon in the oh, process. Okay. So one of the things that people don't realize is that a lot of authors still have day jobs. Yeah. They don't quite have... You know, you, you live from book to book, and you don't necessarily make a full-time living right away off the first couple of books. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, um, where, I've already talked about BrickKBooks.com. I know they can check you out there. But what's um, Facebook, website, where can people uh, check you out, get your books, that type of stuff? My website is SharonSkinner.com, and I have a weekly blog where I blog about the writing, uh, publishing, uh, writing process, mm -hmm. the journey. And I also am on Twitter at Sharon Skinner 56. And I have a Facebook page, Sharon Skinner. And I'm still actually on LiveJournal. You can find me there after Sharon Skinner. I'm glad to know LiveJournal still exists. That's a long time ago that I've heard that term. So cool. All right. Well, um, thank you so much for, for being here today. And let me ask you some questions and get more people to, to know about you. Uh, is there anything you'd like to close with? Anything that uh, I've missed or things you want to talk about? Check out the Brick Cave uh, website because there's always interesting stuff going on. I'm actually looking really forward to Louise Robertson's new book and Bill Campana's new book. Definitely. And I'm excited that we have some new authors coming on board, so watch for that. It's pretty exciting to be part of the Brick Cave community. Awesome. Well, now finally you have a, a, a face to the name Sharon Skinner because, as you know, the last two episodes I have spoke about her and what she's doing, and I'm sure I still will because you are ridiculously busy. 
which is a good thing. Uh, thank you so much for being on the show today. Thanks for having me. Thanks, you guys.